home media. I am a home media reviewer. One video, at least a thousand views. I eat a thousand views for breakfast. Breakfast? I'm not even sure I had breakfast. What did I have for breakfast? Gluten-free waffles, sir. That's right. No, 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 no. Stay focused. Home media reviews. I am home media reviews. Faster than fast. Quicker than quick. I am Lego Lover. I'm Lego Lover. You ready? Oh, yeah. Lego Lover's ready. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Home Media Reviews. As with that parody intro, we're talking cars this week. And as I said last week in Lilo and Stitch, probably the most controversial Pixar film ever created. There are a lot of people out there that don't like this movie. I am not one of those people. To go ahead and preface this, I think Cars is a better movie than Wall-E. I don't like Wall-E at all. If that triggers you, go ahead and click off, because this is not a hate review for Cars. I, for one, love Cars. So as I said, if you get triggered very, very easily with someone not having the same opinion as you, go ahead and click off now. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the history section of Cars. So Cars came racing into theaters. I couldn't avoid that pun. I'm so sorry. Came racing into theaters on June 9th, 2006. Side note, I remember seeing this movie in theaters twice, once with my mother and once with my grandmother. And for all the other sequels of Cars, meaning Cars 2 and 3, I've seen those in theaters twice as well. Now, for the original DVD slash VHS, hmm? That came in November of 2006. Now, I say VHS kind of weirdly because 2006 was the year VHS was officially killed. The last film ever released on that format was A History of Violence. And I bring that up because Cars was also one of the last films to be put out on that format, making this VHS release extremely, extremely rare. I've only ever seen one copy go up for sale on eBay, and the asking price was $10,000. If you think I'm that rich, you are very, very mistaken. But for the original DVD release, which a hell of a lot, which is a hell of a lot more easier to actually get your hands on, that had a full screen and a widescreen release, since this was the era of the whole full screen versus widescreen thing, which I won't talk about here. And some versions of Cars came with a bonus DVD that included a few extra featurettes. Now, that bonus DVD is really not that rare. However, it is kind of cool if you actually have that. I personally don't, but if you do, that's awesome. More power to you. The original Cars Blu-ray came just a year later, in the same month, actually, November of 2007. This was one of the earliest Blu-ray releases for Disney. Disney didn't hop on the Blu-ray train until around 2007, so of course they brought out Cars as one of their uh, makeshift titles. There was a Best Buy exclusive Blu-ray Steelbook released, I believe, two years later? Yeah, two years. In 2009. That came around in December 2009, just in time for the holiday season. But hang on, let's backtrack a little bit. In November of 2009, we got what was called the Ultimate Gift Pack. This was a Blu-ray copy of the film and two exclusive Cars models. One of them, I think, was the Mater Firetruck model. And I think the other one was a Gold Lightning. Don't quote me on that. You can see the picture on your screen right now. I do believe I'm right. And I usually am right, so don't question me. Then, two years later, in 2011, we got our first Blu-ray slash DVD combo pack. And this pack was available in some pretty weird ways. You could get this in either a Blu-ray case or a DVD case. You got the same discs either way, but you could get it in both cases. I don't know why they wasted plastic on this. It was really weird. There was also a Target exclusive version of this that came with a bonus disc. Then in 2013, we got our first 3D version of Cars. A 3D. Pretty sweet, am I right? Not really. 3D is kind of sucky. But that was a 3D Blu-ray plus regular Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital copy plus my liver plus a lot of other things. 
That's a joke on how much stuff comes in that version of the car's Blu-ray, and it's cool. There was just a regular Blu-ray reissue that came with a modern version of a digital copy, meaning it didn't need a separate disc. You just had a little code that you entered in. And this version has some pretty simplistic poster art. I'm not really a fan of it. That came out in October of 2017. However, another version in 2017 also came out, but this was a exclusive to Disney Movie Club. Now, I don't remember what exactly is exclusive about this. I didn't put it in my research, which is dumb of me. Why didn't you do that, me? I think it had something to do with, like, maybe how the slipcover looked. I honestly don't know what's exclusive about this. If it looks any different on your screen, then that's the difference. I'm very prepared for these, as you can tell. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and transition into our close-up for Cars. I already know Mr. MPS is triggered by this because he doesn't like this movie very much, but he is wrong. Starting off the top, full screen. Yeah, I made the I made the wrong choice of getting the full screen version back when this first came out. Actually, it was my parents that made that choice because they bought this for me because I was seven when this movie came out, I think. God, I'm old, but anyway, full screen, not not the best. Uh, from the creators of The Incredibles and Finding Nemo. There's the gang from Radiator Springs, or some of them at least. There's Lightning McQueen and Sally looking over at the sunset. Disney Pixar's Cars with the big Lightning McQueen down there at the bottom. I love this poster. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. To the side, full screen again. Disney Pixar logos, Cars, Lightning McQueen with a lightning bolt along with the DVD logo and a product number. The back, an instant classic from Richard Carlos from Time. His name is Carlos. Does that mean he doesn't drive a car? Why is he reviewing this movie? It's all about cars. UPC code there, blurb about the movie, some screenshots from the movie, two thumbs up from Ebert and Roper. That's what you're, uh, that's what you're getting on the disc. We'll take a look at those when we look at the menu tour. More of the Radiator Springs gang, except Ramon is now here. And then technical specifications, all that stuff, legalese down there at the bottom. Open this up. There's your disc. Lightning and Mater there with full screen above the car's logo. Again, sadly, it's full screen. However, I rectified this mistake of getting the full screen version a few years ago when I picked up cars on Blu-ray. That is this. Same poster as the DVD except a little bit smaller because Blu-ray discs are smaller or Blu-ray cases are smaller. Ultimate Collector's Edition. Blu-ray plus Blu-ray 3D plus DVD plus digital copy. Ha! Do not let that fool you. This is just the standard Blu-ray. I bought this off of eBay and the seller just, I guess he sold the other discs and such because this just contains the regular Blu-ray, but that's fine. I don't need all that extra discs. The side, Blu-ray 3D, Disney Pixar's Cars, Mater this time instead of Lightning with a product number. Hey, 117, same stuff as on the DVD, except now it talks about how it's Blu-ray plus Blu-ray 3D plus DVD plus digital. Watch cars anywhere you go with your digital copy and all that stuff. UPC code there. Bonus features list there. Same screenshots as on the DVD. Same blurb, I'm assuming. A little advertisement here for Disney Movie Reward Points, which are which were, I'm assuming, included in this package when it was brand new. Ton of technical specifications. All that fun stuff there. Open this up. Like I said, just the standard Blu-ray inside. Pretty cool artwork, I guess. I don't know if I prefer this or the DVD artwork. I mean, this is in widescreen, so I guess I prefer it, obviously. 1080p picture quality, widescreen, not full screen, all that good stuff. All right, so that's your close-up. Now let's go ahead and transition into the menu tour for cars. All right, folks, here we are for a menu tour of cars. Not even going to bother holding up the DVD case for you because, like last week, don't have any natural light for now because I'm lazy and forgot to film the rest of these when there was actual light outside. So we're getting it done now. 
because I want to. So interestingly, if you remember from my DVD copy, which is the menu we're, we're looking at right now, it said that this was in full screen, meaning that there would be black bars on the sides, here and there. But interestingly, the menu itself is in widescreen, which I'm kind of confused by. So our options here, i got a lot of options. Uh, we have Play Movie, which is 116 minutes, just shy of 117, which would have been amazing if it was 117 minutes, but it's not. But you know what? I'm not offended at all. Um, John Lasseter, you could have made this movie a minute longer to honor me, but you didn't. Later in the Ghost Light, which is a Pixar short film based in the Cars universe, 7 minutes and 6 seconds. One Man Band is the same length as a Thomas episode. Interesting. 4 minutes and 30 seconds. That's another Pixar short film. Uh, bonus features, scene selection, sneak peeks, and setup. Bonus features include... Let's take a look at that menu here. Alright, here's our bonus features section. The epilogue, which is just the end credit scenes uh, that play alongside the credits. Uh, for the movie, if, you ever, if you've ever seen the movie, which I recommend that you do. Inspiration for Cars, Deleted Scenes, and here are the deleted scenes listed underneath that, and that's it. That's pretty much all you have for bonus content on the DVD, other than the two short films. Scene selection, we've got 32 scenes to pick from here. Like, there's the last part, there's the epilogue, which you could literally just watch at the end of the movie. I don't know why that needed to be as, as its own separate bonus feature. I guess if you just felt like watching the epilogue one day and you didn't want to skip to the end. I don't know. Sneak peeks. Oh, it's like an old-timey drive-in. Yeah, that's funny. Let's all go to the lobby type thing and get some concessions and all that stuff. Ratatouille, Peter Pan, Meet the Robinsons, Cars video game, Disney Blu-ray, and that's it. I'm pretty sure all of these trailers play before the actual movie starts. However, though, because I remember when I was putting this in the player, uh, the Ratatouille trailer started playing so and I clicked the menu button I didn't watch the rest of the trailers because I just didn't care so pretty sure all of these play before the movie actually starts if you don't hit the menu button setup audio options uh, Dolby D digital 5.1 surround sound interesting that that's on a DVD uh, also Dolby digital 2.0 for audio English subtitles on or off and THX optimizer I can't select that Yo, yes I can. THX Optimizer. I guess if you have a THX sound system, you can optimize your audio for that sound system. Uh, you can also return to the movie if you just click the menu to change your audio options. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the menu tour for cars on DVD. Now we're going to move into the Blu-ray. Alright folks, here we are for the Blu-ray menu tour. Not holding up the case. Again, I don't need to reiterate that because you guys already know what the reason is for. This menu is not as dynamic as the DVD menu. It's pretty basic. We have play, games, bonus features, scene selection, and setup. Games, what kind of games do we have? Cine Explorer and Car Finder. Car Finder is an interesting game. It allows you to watch the movie and try to pick out different cars inside of the movie. It's pretty fun. I played it a little bit a couple weeks ago. And Cine Explorer, I'm not sure what this is. Let's actually let's take a look at it and see what it is. Hi, I'm John Lasseter, director of the movie Cars. You're about to experience a revolutionary behind the scenes feature called Cine Explorer. You're loving <laughs> You'll be able to instantly flip back and forth between two commentaries. We did wedge test upon wedge test upon wedge test. In the world where these vehicles have intelligence, tractors would actually be kind of the animals. With Santa Explorer, you'll have the ability to switch on or off supporting artwork, such as storyboards, inspirational imagery, and personal photos. Plus, at certain parts of the movie, a short documentary or deleted scene will become available. Just select it, and you'll jump out to watch the documentary short or deleted scene. Hey, everybody! It's Lightning and then return right back where you left off watching the movie. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I don't want to play any more of that just in case I get uh, copyrighted for that. But that's pretty friggin' awesome. That's a cool way... See, this is why I love Blu-ray. They're so interactive with their bonus features and such. It's amazing. It really is. So now we're back to the main menu. But that's a really cool way to view the movie. I actually might watch it in that format someday. Bonus features... Mater of the Ghost Light, One Man Band, we saw those on the DVD. 
the epilogue, saw that on the DVD too. Bound in Cars, movie showcase, inspiration for cars. I don't know what Bound in Cars is, or movie showcase. What is Bound in Cars? Let's look at that. Now as for the dancing, you can do more. You can reach great heights. In fact, you can soar. You just get a leg up and you slap it on down. And you'll find you're up in what's called the Bound. Oh, this is a parody of the Pixar short film Boundin. I've never seen it, but I've heard of it, and I also, I, I know of it. I've never watched it myself, but I know of it, so, okay, that's interesting. Well, now let's take a look at Movie Showcase. Crash, Dry with Sally, Doc Racing, or Neon. Are these just, like, clips from the film? These are just clips from the movie. Huh. I'm not too sure what purpose that feature serves, but it's interesting. We have Inspiration for Cards, which was the documentary that we found on the DVD. Also, deleted scenes, same ones as on the DVD. And documentary shorts. These you could find uh, spurst throughout the Cinna experience thing, I guess. I've never watched any of these, but... They seem to be interesting. They just play all the way through. There's no, like, menu for these. Not like on the DVD. This is probably a... Yeah, okay. That's a commercial for Disney Movie Rewards, which was just launching around the time of this Blu-ray release. So they were really pushing Disney Movie Rewards, which is not a bad thing. I use Movie Rewards myself. Scene selection have the same scenes as on the DVD. Except now we have a little... You know, time bar down there. You can see where you're at in the movie. And then set up. I assume we'll have a lot more languages. Not a ton more. We got 5.1 surround sound and 2.0. Uh, and French and Spanish. So not a lot of languages. I don't know about subtitles. English for the hearing impaired. Just English, Spanish, and French. Okay. So not a lot of subtitles. Not a lot of languages. But more on the DVD or more than on the DVD. Sorry, I slurred my language there. So that's the menu tour for the Blu-ray of Cars. Let's go ahead and head on back and answer the five main questions as always. Okay, so we're back from the close-up. Now it's time to answer the five main questions as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? The most recent version of Cars was released in 2017, and it's now 2019, and I still see copies of Cars sitting around at Best Buy. Not 3D copies or those combo packs or anything. No, I see the 2017 version with the really simple poster on it that I don't really like. I much prefer the OG poster because that poster is just freaking brilliant. So I would say you could still find this in some reputable retail stores. Check your Best Buys. Mine still has them sitting on the shelves. And they're still at full price. They haven't been marked down at all. Way to go, Disney. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? I can't say yes to this because... Those copies I still see at my Best Buy are not recent. They're back stock, so gonna have to say no. We were doing so well, man. We could answer yes for Jaws, and then it all just went downhill from there. Number three, should you pick this product up? Yeah, as I said in the intro, I really like Cars. I don't understand why so many people don't like this film. It's got everything for everyone. It's got hippie cars. It's got cars that love America in terms of Sarge. Those are stupid reasons. Let's go to real reasons instead. I tried to be funny, but it didn't work. Cars, to me, has always been a really good personal story. It's kind of like a drama. And I know it sounds weird coming from a film where everything's a car, but hear me out. We've got a really good main character of Lightning McQueen. He's a show-off. He's kind of an asshat. He's an everything kind of guy. He loves the fame and the sport of racing. That's his bread and butter. And he's pretty well fleshed out throughout this entire film. He goes through a simple character arc. I'll give you that much, but it's still a character arc. He goes from being kind of an asset to saying, Hey, why don't I slow down a little bit? Why don't I enjoy life some before I, you know, grow old and forget about everything in the past? And I, for one, really resonate with this kind of message. Films, to me, 
if their message doesn't connect with me, I probably won't care that much about it. But I've always connected with the message of cars. That being, don't go through life too fast. Slow down. Enjoy the little moments. Because at some point, you won't have those anymore. And they'll just be distant memories. And, and if you don't experience your life, then did you ever really live? And that, to me, is what Cars is really about. It, of course, opens with a great first action sequence in terms of the race. I love the animation in Cars. I mean, holy crap, those those car models look almost 100% real. I mean, they look amazing. Pixar really blew it out of the freaking park with this animation, dude. Moving off of the animation, I, of course, also really like the characters in Cars. I've already talked about Lightning and how much I kind of relate to him. Not that I'm some big hotshot racer or anything like that, or that my life even has that much of importance as his does. I'm not that famous. I mean, semi-famous, I like to think, but I'm not that famous. But every other character in Radiator Springs has a distinct personality and a shtick that they can go off of. Like I said earlier, Fillmore's the hippie van. Sarge is the over-ecstatic American lover. He's a veteran, for crying out loud. Sheriff is your stereotypical cop guy who would eat a donut if he had hands. Luigi is Italian. Same with Guido. And they love tires. What I'm saying is every character has a distinct personality. They all have really cool designs to them, and the voice work given to them is also fantastic. I think the standout character here, though, is... Doc Hudson, voiced by Paul Newman. I feel for this guy, man. He he was the Hudson Hornet. He had everything. Then he crashed, and they gave his spot away to the next rookie. And just Paul Newman's performance brings me into that character and makes me feel for him. It sucks we never got to actually see Doc on screen again after this. Unless you count the video games, in which case he appears in the first Cars, Cars Made International, and Racerama. But after Racerama, no more uh, appearances from Doc in the actual timeline. He's brought back in Cars 3 through archive voice work, which was a great moment to hear, but he's never brought back as a main character because unfortunately Newman passed away before they could make another film, and that's very unfortunate. But at least we got one really awesome performance out of him in the first Cars. While we're on the subject of characters, let's talk about Mater. I don't hate Mater. I think Mater has some really funny lines in this film. I do, however, think that too much Mater could be a little bit of a bad thing. There's a reason why Cars 2 is my least favorite Cars film. I think it's entertaining as hell, though, but Mater can be a little much in that one. Here, though, I think we get just the perfect amount of Mater. He's Lightning's best friend, and it's cool to see that relationship start develop throughout this movie. Well... I didn't really have a choice. Mater didn't get to say goodbye. Goodbye! Okay, I'm good. And most of all, I have a good time watching Cars. I love this world. I love these characters. I love watching them act the, act out these scenarios in this animated world. I just love everything about this movie. Everything about this movie connects with me on a personal level. That's really why I love Cars, and that's really why I love Cars as a franchise. I think its world is so rich and vast. It has characters of every shape and size. Every ethnic background, possibly gender background, because there's 76 of those nowadays. So absolutely, I recommend the first Cars. I love this film. It's one of my absolute favorites, and I have a good time every single time I watch it. And as I said, I think this is a better, more well-rounded film than one of Pixar's, quote, greatest films Wally. I would watch Cars over Wally. I never want to watch Wally again unless I want to take a good nap. That's not to say of course Wally is a terrible film by any means. No, Wally is pretty okay. Number 4. Where should you pick this product up? Go to Best Buy. See if there's any copies still sitting around there like at mine. Or or you could come to my Best Buy. Heck, I will arrange a meet up at my Best Buy. And number 5, what price should you pay? Well, for any version of the DVD that has a bonus disc, either from Target or the first bonus disc, uh, actually the Target version is rarer, so for the Target one I'd say 25 to 30 For the original bonus disc, that one's not really rare at all. 
So 10 to 15 for that. For any of the Blu-rays though, I'd say the highest price you should probably pay is 10, is around 10 bucks or so. Of course, you guys saw in, in the close-up, I bought mine off of eBay. Um, and it, and of course, it has the 3D packaging, but it doesn't have any of the cool stuff that the 3D th set came from. It just has the regular Blu-ray, which I'm cool with. I wish I had the, the first Blu-ray that has that awesome slipcover on it, but I don't. Sad face. Basically, for any of the Blu-rays, $10, maybe $15. But get your hands on a Blu-ray. Don't watch the DVD. Don't be a plebeian like I w was for years and own a full screen d DVD copy of Cars. Get yourself a very nice Blu-ray and enjoy this experience. So that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the HMR on Cars. I'm probably going to get some hate in the comments or on Twitter or wherever you guys like to throw your hate comments at me. I don't have a MySpace, so don't come looking there. Twitter and such saying, How dare you say that Cars is a better movie than Wally? -E? Unsubscribe! Look, I warned you this was going to be a positive review of Cars. What about that didn't you understand? Anyway, these last couple of episodes, we've covered some animated films. So why don't we jump back to live action? I'm kind of missing live action here. But not just live action. Let's cover comedy. We haven't really covered comedy yet in this show, so let's throw in, oh, I don't know, a little film called Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby? Because that's what we're going to do next week. That's, that's the movie that we're covering. You can't change it. It's already done. It's coming out next week. Thank you all for watching, and as always, good night, everybody.